Hello. What we're going to talk about today is uh, the SFA star chart 2 where I'm going to talk about uh, basically the meridian and how to actually go out and go out and see particular uh, constellations and stars on any particular given day. Um, I wish we could actually zoom from any date to any date so we could see these, but uh, some of these times, sometimes you're going to have to wait nine months to actually see what you really want to see. But anyway, the meridian um, on this diagram is actually defined as the southern compass point through your zenith, through the celestial north pole. For us, Polaris is really close to that, and I'll show you that on this diagram on this side, um, over to the northern compass point. So again, south, zenith, Polaris, and the north compass point, that's your meridian. Things come up um, from the east side, and they rise up. Um, looking south, they arc up, usually their highest point. Um, uh, take that back. Their highest point is farthest um, up in the sky along that meridian and then they cross back down and they set in the western sky. So um, like my one of my favorite constellations is Orion, a very easy, easy constellation to see with some really cool stars. Um, it rises up, crosses the meridian and sets in the west. Okay, And uh, the SFA star chart um, is located down there and there is Orion. Okay, the sky dome, celestial sphere is one way of looking at it. The sky dome, it's a little different because you don't get to see the part that's below the horizon. Again, the horizon is the part that differentiates the part of the celestial sphere you can see versus the part that you cannot see. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so from the southern point, which in terms of azimuth is 180 degrees, up to zenith, which is 90 degrees from your horizon, um, to the celestial north pole, where I actually um, superimposed Polaris, or at least a star to represent Polaris over the word celestial meridian. This dotted line is your celestial meridian, to the north point, which is zero or 360, depending on how you go. Again, azimuth, talking about starting at north, moving in a clockwise direction, 90 degrees to east, 180 degrees to south, 270 to west, and back to 360 or zero to north. Altitude, talking about the horizon as being zero, your zenith as being 90 degrees. Um, Polaris for us is around 39 degrees above the equator, and that is equal to, once again, your latitude. Okay, so we have latitude, um, not really the SFA star chart. Um, another thing I want to talk about is perihelion and aphelion. Talked about that in another video. Perihelion meaning uh, uh, when the sun is closest to the earth, or really I should say the earth is closer to the sun in our um, counterclockwise uh, the, um, elliptic uh, orbit. Aphelion is actually where it's farthest from the sun. If you look at the dates, they don't really coincide. These dates really don't have any idea, um, any any terms of how warm it is or how cold it is. Um, we're actually closest to the sun in January, January 5th, and in 2012, January 5th, um, I normally remember it as the 4th, and we're actually farthest from the sun, July 5th. Um, equinoxes, March 20th for 2012, that's going to be our uh, vernal equinox. Um, we're closely approaching that. Um, the solstice, uh, June 20th. Um, the October for, uh, uh, autumnal equinox, the 22nd of September. The winter solstice is the 21st. I also put the dates for the 13th, but this is uh, for the 2013. This is 2012. Normal aphelion. Um, when we are actually farthest from the sun in July, um, 152 plus million kilometers. Perihelion when we're close, 147 plus million kilometers. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that when we get down to this SFA chart. Okay, once again, the SFA chart is something that I think is probably the best astronomical tool. Um, you can fold it up. You can roll it, you can stick it in your backpack, and be in your glove box. Um, it is a free PDF. But what it really does, it shows you the celestial meridian, um, the point in the sky above the Earth's meridian. It actually breaks the sky up into what's called declination, um, looking at the whole sphere, zero, the equator, and it goes up by um, ones, actually all the way up to 
90. Um, SFA chart 2 only goes from 60 north to 60 south. You'll have to look at chart 1 to go from 30 north up to 90. Um, a much better view of the really high northern sky, but that's not what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about the meridian. This line is the ecliptic. I'm actually moving this direction. If you see there are dates on there. Um, this is the date of the sun. So if I actually pick a nice sun color and I wanted to find the sun for um, the summer solstice, it would be located right there. And if the zodiac signs were actually set up the way they are, looks like we would be between Taurus and Gemini. Um, again, you're Gemini if the sun was in your part of the sky. Now, this, because of a couple of things, um, uh, procession, some other things that the Earth has done over the past couple few thousand years. Um, this is not exactly the setup that they saw way back when. Um, if you were a Gemini, you were born somewhere between uh, very um, late June to July. The way it's really set up, the way they saw it, we'll talk about that picture in a second. Um, if you were a, you, what was I saying? Uh, I was going to actually talk about Scorpio, which is mine. We were talking about Gemini. Gemini, your birthday is between May 21st and June 21st. And if you take a look at this thing now, May 21st to June 21st, you should really be a Taurus. But again, this is the ecliptic. It marks the position of the sun's motion. On May 21st, it's going to be right there. On the 22nd, it's going to be there. The 23rd, the 24th, the 25th. Remember, 360 degrees in a circle. We have 365 days. Works out to just about one degree a day. And it's going to go all the way through. Um, the summer solstice will be there. This is the vernal equinox, which was back in uh, March, a couple of days from now. This is the autumnal equinox when we get into September. And then this is the summer solstice. Um, and the ecliptic will continue to go down to reach the winter solstice, and then it'll come back up to reach the summer solstice. But again, this is not what I'm talking about. If you want to go out and see Orion, which is located right here, you don't want to go out anywhere in June or July. What you do want to do is you want to go out in February, late to mid-February. This is the local 8 o'clock evening meridian. And what that means is this is the February 20th meridian. So if you went out and looked to the southern sky, you would see Orion really close. In fact, uh, if you went out around the 17th, it would be right smack on your meridian. It does cross your meridian every day, but this is, again, the 8 o'clock meridian. If you wanted to go out um, on uh, December 6th to see Orion cross your meridian. Um, you'd have to go out and if you take a look, the 8 o'clock meridian um, actually happens in terms of right ascension at 1. Um, this would be your 9 o'clock meridian, your 10 o'clock meridian, your 11 o'clock, your 12 o'clock, and somewhere between your 12 o'clock midnight and 1 o'clock in the morning you would actually see this constellation cross your, cross your meridian. These guys all cross your meridian every single day. Again, it's not the stars that's moving, it's the Earth rotating. We rotate in a counterclockwise direction. This way, we see the celestial sphere move in a clockwise direction this way. Okay, so this is the way we find our stars. So again, all you have to do is find the 8 o'clock meridian time for a particular date and then you can go down here and actually go forward in time or backward in time if you wanted to see for February 5th um, what your meridian would look like at 7 o'clock an hour earlier than this just go to the 4 and this is your meridian. I think the 4 o'clock and uh, these guys are set up pretty close to be the same thing um, so if this is the 0 down here this is the zero, this would be the one, this is the two. And again, these are right ascensions like longitude for the celestial sphere. These are declinations like latitude. And using that, we can actually figure out the position of any star, um, saying that it is uh, about two hours of right ascension, maybe 155, and looks like it's about two or three degrees north declination. So you would write that thing as right ascension. Uh, somewhere, let's say, one hour, 55 minutes. And your declination would be, um, let's say, three degrees. Okay, so 
These show your 8 o'clock meridian. If you want to go outside at 8 o'clock, just look for the date and you can actually see exactly what will be crossing your meridian. You can theoretically see about six hours forward and six hours back um, when the sun sets to the sun rising. But that's the way this is set up. Last picture doesn't really deal with anything in terms of what I'm talking about. It's just a cool picture. When I found that Celestial Meridian uh, Sky Dome picture, this is the main picture on that website. The thing I like about this, this is showing Saturn. It is a real picture taken from a satellite. I'm not exactly sure which one it was. But what we have is we have the sun sitting right back. This is like an eclipse of the sun um, caused by Saturn. And it shows beautiful definition of the rings and uh, looks like gaseous probably just uh, um, probably lens problems or lens uh, effects because that solar radiation the reason I like this picture do you see that thing right there that's the earth so we're actually looking at the Earth through the rings of Saturn, looking back towards the Sun, which let's say the Sun is located right here. And as the Earth is going around the Sun, so is Saturn. And from this view, we actually get to see the Earth in its orbit um, from Saturn in its orbit. Okay, well, thank you very much. I appreciate the time and the effort, and uh, take care. Bye.